Oh boy, oh boy, whatever he needs to do to keep those pedals going now. This is an unforced error that'll lead to an icing call, provided Fadoon got there, and he did, and he got hurt. There are some times when a player goes down that you have a gut feeling that this isn't going to turn out very well. Fadoon went ankle first into the end boards, Bob, and that at first glance That's looks really bad. It all happened kind of fast. The, the puck got sent down the ice, and I was just trying to to get back as fast as I could. His stick kind of hit one of my feet out from under me and I couldn't stop from, from going knee first into the boards. So once I got out there, it was with the amount of pain and the mechanism that we were looking at knee or some sort of major bony injury. We got to get him to a facility to control pain and stabilize. Taylor was immediately rushed to hospital from the XL Energy Center and underwent emergency surgery on his fractured right femur. It was a procedure that went well into the early hours of the next day. While he was in surgery, Chris Davey, along with the rest of the Oilers staff, were arranging for Fadoon's parents to fly in from Edmonton and visit their injured son. And at the same time, already planning the young defenseman's rehabilitation program. By time he came back to Edmonton, the house was set up and we then uh, initiated the treatments right at his home for the first two weeks. There's lots of things that we need to organize that isn't normal for the rest of our injuries that we have here. While such a severe injury is a first for the team, it's all too familiar to Minnesota Wild defenseman Curtis Foster. Foster, a former oiler, fractured his left femur on a similar play in March of 2008 and was one of the first people to reach out to Fadoon after his injury occurred. I think the biggest thing for him is uh, you just got to stick to the course. You know, it's a long process, but at the end of the day, you know, you feel a little better every day. You know, when you do take those first few steps and you do take the, you know, take the ice for the first time, every single time you make that next step, it definitely feels a lot better and you do feel that you see the light at the end of the tunnel. When you have the, you know, the staff and the team like Edmonton here, you know who you know are going to stick behind them. It's a huge thing. And, um, you know, I know for me, Minnesota stuck behind me and stayed with me, and it's probably the reason why I'm still in the league today. So, I mean, when you can have that support, it's a huge thing. The guidance of TD Force and Chris Davies has been amazing. Uh, they've been so passionate about helping this young man. I think the biggest thing that I have is, is sort of trying to make sure that everybody, uh, growing right from uh, all you know, the therapists, uh, Chris, the doctors, Dr. Reed and Dr. Nadu, and then our management and our coaches, uh, and even uh, Taylor's parents, I was lucky to have um, good communication with everybody. Uh, we talked about what the next stages would be uh, and then we execute. The pool is a fantastic modality to help with any swelling. So here's a guy that just sitting in his wheelchair, the pressure of his leg on the wheelchair would be painful. So we, we got him in the water and he was immediately unweighted and pain free and was able to move his hip move his knee and do things that, you know, minutes before he just thought that that was never going to happen. But no, no twisting, no torquing the fear. When you're ready, I just want you to walk. The first time I was in the water, it was just the feeling to be able to touch my feet to the ground and not have to hold on to something was was a pretty special moment, I think, to know that I was going to be able to work that in with the rehab to be able to be in the water and actually move around. It was like the first time I felt human after the whole ordeal happened. You scared you're gonna fall? A little bit. He just feels so helpless offline and then you get in the water and you feel normal and you start moving around and he's going forwards and backwards and he's doing shuffles and he's, it's just, you know, exciting to watch, you know, the look on his face that it, things are going. Well. The, the pool here behind me has a, a movable floor so we can change the water depth. All these little milestones where we slower, slowly lower the pool like that, it breaks it up in a way that it doesn't seem so long, yet we've made all these strides in, in that short amount of time, so it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. With Taylor, there would be a lot of emphasis on trying to slow down the muscle atrophy of his quads, hammies, and his glutes, hip flexors. There was, you know, a challenge that it, every day that we had to make the muscle fire. You know, he had so much swelling there and so much pain that he didn't want to use it. So we had to, every day, we were working five hours a day for the first two, three months there 
just to get everything working, 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 and to stop the shrinking of that leg. Every time there was a new step in the progression, I was at an appointment with Dr. Reed, we took x-rays, kind of took the next step, and then Hap was right there with a plan of how we were going to proceed forward. And it was, that was really important to me to help maintain forward progress and always feel like I was working towards something. Three, two, one, go. Push, 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 And finally when it got to the point where I was able to get into the weight room and start to do a little bit more, I got to spend a lot more time with Simon and it just added another guy to the team who's been really, really helpful this entire time. Simon Bennett is fantastic at bringing motivation and enthusiasm and helping our guys work at the highest level that they can work at. Just in time for beach season. <laughs> now once we got to a certain point that Taylor was able to go on the ice, there were some things that I needed to do with Taylor. Um, but once he got to a certain point, we needed to bring in Steve Serdakny, our hockey skills coach. And uh, he can come out there and just take some two, three seconds to watch and say, well, look, he's compensating here or he's not pivoting very well there. And I either need to figure out whether it's a weakness or a tightness or, or something confidence, because there's so many things that we have to make sure are going well with Taylor as we move forward. It's unbelievable where Taylor was and now where he is now, and um, it's a testament to a number of different people. The first one that comes to mind is Chris Davey. He's worked with him uh, pretty much day in and day out. Uh, he's pushed the envelope. Uh, he's asked the questions. He's always trying to get him to do new things and better things. And then number two is the rest of the medical staff. Uh, you know, Dr. Nadu, our head team physician, he was he was there right from the start. He was in good communication with Minnesota. Dr. David Reed, uh, the ortho surgeon. Um, he's been the one that's been following Taylor the, the closest as a staff. It's been a, a real good learning experience and it just shows how well that they, we've all worked together. Really tests the character and the makeup of, a, of an individual. Taylor Fadoon is, uh, is a shining star here in his reaction to such a challenge. Taylor's positive attitude and drive comes as no surprise to Davey who has forged a close bond with the prospect as they work together to restart his career. Taylor is a very intelligent hockey player who questions everything I ask him to do so that A, he understands and B, that we're, that, uh, we're, we're taking care of everything. And uh, so he, it is fantastic to work with an athlete like that that is engaged and motivated. He has shown the entire room what hard work is and that there's nothing that you can't overcome and it, it's just nice you come back from a road trip and the players see him wheeling around in his cane and he was in crutches before we left it's just really good to good to see and a good guy to work with he's been an incredible role model and, and teacher this entire time it feels like every time we hit a new step in the process where I can put more weight on. He's constantly thinking of new things to do and testing everything out on the scale himself first to make sure that it's in my safe range. And he's got a tremendous amount of energy that helps me stay positive and helps me be excited about all the new steps. And, and I've, we've got to spend quite a bit of time together. So I, I feel like we've grown quite close. And as I've been able to do more and more, even when things seem difficult, I'm not really able to complain about it because he's right there beside me doing everything at the same time. So. I can't, like, I can't speak highly enough about the guy. He's, he's pretty humble about it, but he's been a tremendous part of this rehab. This past week, the 23-year-old returned to practice with his teammates, a monumental step in moving forward from the rehab process and focusing on fighting for a roster spot at training camp come September. I want to be able to head into summer training without even having to think about my leg, just as if it was the end of a season and I was ready to train just with everyone else so that when the time comes to be here again at the beginning of September, it's a thought in the past and it's not something that I'm thinking about anymore. After a whole year of kind of being involved but not really being involved, you know, not being in the dressing room or in the games, in the heat of battle with the guys, it's something that I, I really do miss and it's something that I'm really, really excited about to get back to.